Hi, I'm Aaron with Saddle Point Systems, and today I'm going to show you how to design your own custom even wrapped strips for the Fastback 20 tape binding system so that you can print any text or logo or custom color directly on the spine of the book so that when you put it into a bookshelf, you don't lose the title or any information you want to convey. We're going to keep it real simple today with just a simple background color, a logo, and a text box, but that should be uh, a good start for all the tools you'll need in the future and hopefully it'll get you up and going so that you can print your own custom spines for your own books. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's get started by going to the Saddle Point Systems website for our template and under the resources tab we'll click on image blank custom printing and if I scroll down um, to the download image blank template section under the Fastback Model 20, you see this 3-up even wrap word uh, template. Now this style of bind is not available for the 9, which will only do the front wrap. So this is an exclusive bind for the 20. And we'll go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. Okay, so you, get, you, you can see the three strips with the black line representing the strip itself and the red line representing the gutters of the strip and then you've got this gray line which runs right across the exact middle of the binding strip with these perforated guidelines that are a quarter inch from the top and bottom so this whole area is actually half an inch now the 20 will bind a book that's up to an inch and a half thick so you could make something that's bigger than this area but most books don't tend to go over a half inch so it's just kind of a helpful guide but you can make it as small or as big as you want the center line is really the most important thing so to start I want to insert a background color and the way I do that is I go to the insert shapes option and I'm going to select the rectangle tool and this little trigger lets me know that the tool is ready to go so I'm going to click in the bottom left corner in the bleed section and I'm going to hold the mouse and drag it. So I click, hold, and I'm going to drag it to the very top right corner until I'm happy with the position and I'm going to let go. So there is my shape, a uh, nice rectangle. And now what I want to do is actually change the color of the background. So I'm going to right click and click on format auto shape. And I've got two things to do. First, I want to change the fill. And I could select one of these uh, themed colors, but I'm going to go to the More Colors option. And under the Custom tab, I can drag this up to a nice custom purple color. And there's a preview, so I can kind of gauge what it's going to look like before I actually select it. So I'll just, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then the other thing I want to do is get rid of this black uh, borderline. So if I go to the line tool, or line option rather, and click this drop down, I can select no color, and that'll eliminate that line. Okay, so I've got a purple rectangle, no black line anymore. And now what I want to do is insert my logo. So I'm going to go to insert pictures, and I want to go to my folder with my logo in it. And it's actually a white logo on a transparent background, so I'm going to bring it to the front so I can actually see it, because this white canvas does not show the logo. And if I go to the Position tool and click on one of these options, you can see that now it's visible with the overlay uh, with this purple background. And it's really big, so I need to change the size. And the way I can do that is by right-clicking onto the logo I'm going to click Format Auto Shape, and under the Size tab, right now the absolute value for the height is 2.74 inches. I want it to fit within this half inch gap, so let's do something a little less than half an inch so it's got a little room to breathe. Let's try 0.4 inches. So it adjusted it to 0.4 inch height, and it automatically... Uh, changed the width accordingly and kept the aspect ratio. So now I'm going to put my logo somewhere on this side of the strip and 
then I'm going to make a text box with some customizable information on the other side of this crib. So to insert a text box, I'm going to go to insert, text box right here, and I can just select the simplest text box there is. And let's go ahead and just do a generic title. This could be anything you want. I'm going to center the text, and one of the tricky parts about dragging a text box and moving it is just making sure that you have the proper thing selected. So just to go over this, if you come up to it, you can see that if I go in the box, it changes to a cursor, but if I go to the edge of the box, you get this uh, little axis icon. So if I click now, I can actually see these little midpoints, and that tells me the, objects is, the object is selected. And then if I click and hold the click, I can drag the box around. So I want to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down to my background, just somewhere roughly in there. Ooh, where did my... Uh-oh. My logo disappeared. That's not good. So actually, I'm going to do Control-Z and just get my logo back before I mess with anything else. There it is. Hmm. So that's actually a good uh, lesson learned the hard way. When I inserted the text box, I didn't deselect my, my logo. So it actually uh, deleted my logo on accident. So what I want to do, I'm going to redo that step. I'm going to deselect by clicking off of the logo. So now those points aren't there. Now I can insert my text box. And that won't make my, my logo disappear. So sorry for that. Let's go ahead and type this out. And let me go ahead and center it. If you go to the Home tab, uh, you can get all of your text editing stuff, all the tools that you need. Uh, now, like I was saying, I'm going to wait until this is a, an axis icon so that I know that I can select it and drag it. So I'm just clicking and holding and dragging it down, roughly lining it up. We'll change it in a second. And then I'm going to click and drag again and just pull it over. Now, I'm going to change a few of the, the style details. So first, before I change anything with the font, I want to change the background color of the box itself. So I click on the box, um, making sure that I have these this, this axis icon uh, visible. And then I'm going to right click on the perimeter of the box, format auto shape, and I'm going to change the color in the lines just like I did this purple box. But this time, I'm just going to place uh, no color on the fill and no color on the line. So it's just going to be transparent box and this purple will just uh, come right in like that. Now, Black is kind of hard to read on a purple background, so I'm going to go ahead and select this text and change it to white so it's more visible. And I'm going to turn the, the font from something other than times. We'll try a little bit fancier font. There we go. Now you can see that this text box actually isn't big enough to extend onto one line, so the line broke and it made two, but if I stretch it out, that actually fixes that problem. Okay, so that looks good. Maybe make this text a little bit smaller, just so it's not overwhelming the logo. And now what I want to do, I don't see my guidelines anymore, but I can fix that by changing the transparency of the purple background. So I'm going to right click on that object, format auto shape, and there's a transparency slider under the fill section. So I'm just going to slide that over so I can see what's behind the purple object. And you can see now I can see those guidelines. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just one at a time, I'm going to select each object that I want on my spine and when you select it, you see these little midpoints, and if I put those directly on this center line, 
that should pretty much get me right in the center. So I only had to move that one a couple of clicks down with my uh, keyboard. I just press the down arrow and then I'm going to select my text box and if I were to use the arrow keys right now nothing would happen because it's actually selected with the cursor so I've got to click on the perimeter of the text box once it, once I've entered into it and then it it changes you see these points start to start to show up so I'm actually going to shrink it a little bit so it's not stretched out so much and I actually have it pretty much on that line so I don't really need to move it too much and then the last thing I want to do is just make sure it's roughly even let me zoom out a little bit oh, that's close enough so I want this space to be roughly the same as this space so what I can do just as a quick and easy um, measurement is actually count these uh, perf lines. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right there. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's actually pretty darn close. I don't think I need to move anything. It looks pretty good. In the future, I could always change this text or put a new logo in. But right now, what I'm going to do is actually copy all these elements and insert them into these empty slots. So the, the way to do that in an easy fashion is to hold the shift button and select your object. So I've already selected my background, but I'm holding shift and I'm going to click on my logo and I'm also going to click on my text box. And you can see I've got one, two, three objects selected now. So I can copy those by pressing control C on the keyboard or just going to the, the home copy. Uh, option but I'm gonna do control C because I like keyboard shortcuts and then I'm gonna press control V to paste or you can just paste right there and you can see that all three of those objects got pasted at once and I can drag them and they all move as a group so that's really nice and I'm just gonna drag them within these boundaries and double check to make sure that my midpoints are on my images are correct so it's a little high so I can use my keyboard to just move all of those objects at the same time that looks a little better and I'll zoom out one more time and I have all these objects still copied to the the clipboard so I'm just gonna paste one more time with control V or you can use the toolbar itself I'll drag all these objects up again to the third slot, plunk them in, and again I want to make sure that everything is on this center line. So again it's a little high so I'm just going to use everything still selected because I haven't uh, clicked off of the screen. So just using my keyboard again I'll just drop it down one, two, three, yeah three clicks down that looks pretty good so it's gonna print right in the center of my spine so that it's not wrapped too far to the bottom or the top of the book and that's looking good the last step that I I want to do is uh, reduce the transparency and put these purples back to a solid color and I can do those all at the same time in one fell swoop if I just click and hold shift again I'm going to select all three backgrounds, so I'm holding shift, I'm going to click the first one, second one, third one, and I'm going to right click and go to format auto shape, and you can see the transparency is at 26%, so I'm going to slide this all the way back down, oops, to 0%, and if things go according to plan, it should turn them all purple. Yeah, so, logo, text box, custom color and we've duplicated it three times. You don't need to worry about deleting these uh, guidelines because the purple will overlay and they won't, uh, it won't print when you're printing them on, in your printer. But uh, if you did happen to have a design that was missing, that wasn't full bleed, uh, and you did see those guidelines, you could just easily click on them and select them and press the, the delete button on your keyboard 
and that would eliminate them because they are connected all as one layer. So last step in this process is just to save our file. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And I can save it as a Word document template, but I can also save it as a PDF, which will allow you to get um, a slightly higher resolution when you're printing. So let's do that. And if I go to the options, I want to make sure that optimize for image quality is selected. And then I found that if you do select the PDF compliant option, sometimes it messes up the uh, transparent PNG files that are embedded. So I'm going to keep it deselected to make sure that my transparent image comes out right. But it is going to be sort of dependent on a file by file basis. But I think those are the safest bets. I'm going to save it, and it should open up a, uh, a preview of my, of my file. And there it is. So that's nice. I can print that out on, directly on my inkjet printer and get to binding. So those were even wrapped strips uh, for the, the Fastback 20. I hope this was a helpful video, and I hope that you can kind of start from there and work your way up into something more complex and we'll be doing more in the future but for now happy binding and stay tuned hope you have a great day bye bye